that's going there. This is Dream God Nation in progress. Hi everybody, uh, welcome to In Air's Kitchen. The sound's on too? I think so. Yeah, okay. Um, we are getting started outside right now, so we will go into the kitchen in a minute. Violet's gonna be my helper today. You feeling chilly? It's sort of been a rainy, chilly day, but it's been a nice day for planting things. We just got a bunch of seedlings. Um, we all just got back from Western Massachusetts, and my parents live back there, and Brooke's parents live back there, so we had some nice walks with um, our mothers yesterday. And then we picked up a bunch of seedlings um, from a really wonderful grower. And uh, they are tapped out for right now, but if they have more come online, I'll let everybody know. Um, and, uh, and for next year, it's also a really nice thing if you're planting. Um, I don't know many people that have um, organic seedlings and they have um, a seedling CSA, which is super cool idea. So this is like half of what we got today. We got a lot of stuff and um, this is gonna plant our garden. We have a few things we direct sow, like carrots and stuff like that, but the rest of it we're planting this way. And we have a combination of uh, edible flowers, uh, cutting flowers, and then we also have um, a lots of herbs, which are right behind me here, and we have a vegetable garden over there. So we feel really lucky to get to do that, but we also have extra plants. So we're planting some, um, some containers. And if you're living a small space, um, you can get a few seedlings and plant a container and, if you have an outdoor place or a window you can keep it near you can you can grow at home even with really small spaces um, and I, I think I'm not a very great gardener but I keep trying and I still love doing it um, so uh, let's let's grab our rhubarb this right here is the rhubarb plant and this show today is all about rhubarb this is what I'm hoping is the first of a number of episodes that we have that are focused on a particular fruit or vegetable that's in season so I love rhubarb, it's one of my favorite things, but I would never have rhubarb in October. Uh, it just feels like it would feel wrong to me. Also, it doesn't grow at that time. And rhubarb is hard to find in grocery stores. Um, hopefully, if you don't have your own plant, I'm hoping you guys can find a friend who has a rhubarb plant um, and you might be able to uh, get yourself some rhubarb that way. When I was a kid, uh, I used to get rhubarb, well, my dad would get rhubarb from a place in Berniston. Um, which is the town I grew up in, and there was a little general store called Streeters. And around this time of year, when we would go into the store, they would always tell us to go grab a bunch of rhubarb. They had a whole lot of rhubarb plants. Like, I mean, imagine 20 of these. At least it felt like that as a kid. Maybe if I was an adult, it would feel a little smaller. But it was rhubarb everywhere, and there was tons of it. And when you go into the general store, you'd take home a bunch of rhubarb, and we would use that to make... Um, rhubarb compote, which I'm going to show you guys today. We'd use it to make rhubarb pies. We'd make other delicious things with rhubarb. And um, uh, and it's it's a very unique taste. If you didn't grow up with it, it might feel a little funny to you the first time you have it. But um, I absolutely love rhubarb. And this plant here came from a clover customer. Uh, there's a guy named Lenny who um, I think I mentioned uh, previously on the show. He, he was really into bees. He taught me about honey and bees. But he was a shuttle driver between MIT uh, Medical Center, which is where our truck was parked in the very early days of Clover, and um, uh, the Lincoln Labs. And so he would drive people back and forth between those two spots, and he would stop and say hi and chat when he was, uh, when he was waiting for passengers and stuff. And he would buy french fries from us and other things, and sometimes we'd give him a little bit um, without charging him. And we became friends, and he brought me a rhubarb plant. So this was probably about 11 years ago. It was just a little teeny plant and a little pot. He gave it to me. I put it on the back bumper of the truck because you can't bring dirt into the kitchen environment. At the end of the day, I brought it home and I planted it here. And you can see it's become this huge, beautiful plant. Um, and I think what I need to do soon is split it up and, and give some pieces of it to other people. So if there's anybody who wants a rhubarb plant, maybe uh, write to me and, and if you're nearby, we'll find a way to get you some. 
Um, but right now what we're doing is we're waiting for these new leaves to unfurl and we're waiting for these stalks to grow. You can see that those stalks growing. That's what we're going to eat. And we'll take a few of these today um, to make all of our rhubarb stuff. Here you'll see some flowers. So this is a very mature plant. I didn't get my first flower for I think four or five years, but now we've got one, two, three, four, at least five, maybe more than five flowers growing. These are beautiful. They're gonna come up and they're gonna open up and they're really, really spectacular. Um, they're really, really pretty. And when we're picking the rhubarb, uh, I'll just point out a couple things if you haven't done this before. Um, one is you want a sharp knife. So I've got a sharp knife in my hand. And as you go in here, you wanna go um, pretty close to the to the root there. And Violet, do you wanna pull that, pull that lead back just a little, just gently like that? There you go. So you wanna go pretty close to the bottom and you wanna uh, cut it gently and you wanna cut it on angle and you wanna support the stock while you're doing it. Um, and you're gonna need to be careful that you aren't cutting everything because it's really easy. There's so much in there when you stick your knife in that you're just slicing through everything and you don't really wanna do that. You wanna be surgical about this and just pick out a few leaves. And I'm gonna pick uh, stalks that look a little more mature. So right here, see, I could cut, there's a whole bunch I could cut if I wasn't careful and I don't wanna cut them all because these little ones that are there, they're going to continue to grow and they'll become bigger than this someday. So I don't want to, I don't want to stunt their growth. Um, so that's, that's a nice, um, let's see what's down here. There's a nice big one under there. I'm going to just reach under here and get another cut. And I'm just being careful when I'm doing these not to cut multiple stems. We'll come over here and I'll cut a few more from the other side. And then Violet, do you want to try and cut some? Sure. All right. Let's see, uh, reach in, I'm going to cut this one down here, and I'm going to cut that one right there, that's one, two, okay, but do you want to try and cut this one right here, do you want to try and cut this one right here, you're just okay. going to be careful, just be careful not to cut the other pieces below it, maybe just like sort of start right there and cut it up gently, okay, and they cut really easily, so it's not like you're really struggling against it. But you do want to be, that's it. Yep, like that. Yeah, just try not to get that one behind it. There we go. You got it? Nice. Oh, oh so now you, well, it's all right. So this is what happens sometimes. I used to do that lots and lots. We got a little one, but we'll eat this. It's also delicious. Um, maybe we can get, um, maybe we can get this one here, Vi. Let me see that knife. Go. It's a lot of rhubarb. It is a lot of rhubarb. But well, we have a lot of things to make today. So let's see. That's a nice stock right there. Mostly I'm just looking to take the bigger ones and also to spread out the harvest. I don't want to take everything from one spot and leave the plant totally naked. Um, and now Violet, I accidentally cut a couple. So we got some smaller ones here. Um, how are we doing? Maybe two more? I um, mean, we have some over there, too. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's a lot of rhubarb? Yeah. Well, we do have a lot we're going to make today. We're going to make a pie. We're going to make a pie? We're going to make a pie. We're going to make agua fresca. And we're also going to make a rhubarb compote. So I might get one more big one here. So. Part of the reason we're being careful about this is we would like to harvest rhubarb um, many times this summer and not just one time. So we'll be able to come back and get some more rhubarb later this week and we'll be able to get more rhubarb the week after that and the week after that. As long as we're thoughtful and um, careful about where we take these, the plant's gonna be really healthy, it'll keep growing, we'll have new shoots replacing the ones that we take these are like crazy prehistoric looking leaves. Um, now it's raining on our head. So one thing we're gonna do before we go inside, we're going to, so something I usually do, here by, you wanna do this? You wanna get out of the rain? Snorri! All right, Snorri's not bothering our chicks. So I'm, I wanna cut the top off this, the big leafy part. Do we wanna grab the bowl there? So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this off here. 
we'll put all this in the compost, but you're gonna see it's gonna be a pretty big pile of leaves, and there's no sense in bringing all those leaves into the kitchen. So we're just gonna, um, gonna take all those. So I'm just cutting these uh, right at the top, um, right where the stem is, is coming up into the leaf, and almost there. The leaves also, if anything's gonna have bugs and stuff like that, it'd be the leaves. So if I do this outside, I avoid bringing all that stuff into the kitchen too. But Blue, will you grab me those other couple there? And it looks like celery or something, but it really tastes um, very different from that. And I, most of the treatments of rhubarb are sort of like a fruit, but um, there are some savory treatments of rhubarb too. Um, in some different cuisines around the world. Um, I think that looks pretty good. I, uh, I might get one or two more stocks. So I just took a couple more, and um, as you can see, we're not stripping this bare. We're leaving lots and lots of like healthy leaves there, um, and the smaller ones are going to have some new room to grow back in. Uh, this is all going to be composted. I'll just put it there for right now, and we're ready to get going. Oh, do you want to show everybody the chicks? Yeah. All right, let's give it a try. Here, we hold this. All right, I'm gonna put this in there too. We're going to go see if the Wi-Fi works over by the chicks. This is Snorri and Tulip, if you haven't met them before. Snorri was just walking into the chicken coop, which he's not supposed to do. And now Tulip's trying to teach him a little lesson. Tulip takes any opportunity she can to teach her brother a lesson. It's a complicated relationship. So here we have our chicken coop. and. Uh, Full-size chickens sort of wander in and out during the day, but um, they're not anywhere nearby right now. Um, but these are the little chicks. These are the new ones. And um, it's a little bit dark. I don't know how well you can see in there. Maybe if you get closer, it's easier to see. Um, we have a we have a little, a little um, separate enclosure for the smaller chicks. Can you see in there? Um, so these are the newer ones, and uh, you can see they're already perching. They just look like smaller chickens at this point. I mean, they, they were teeny little babies earlier, but now they're getting bigger. Um, my favorite one is Aurora. She's got the puffy cheeks right there. She started ducking down, but she's, the, she's light colored and she has big puffy cheeks. Yeah, so um, they are a lot of fun and um, they, they need to be separate like this because right now they're so much smaller than the adult chickens. Um, chickens are funny and they really won't be very accepting of them right now. So they wouldn't be very safe with the grown chickens, but they will in time. And this way they all get, get acclimated before that happens. Um, should we head inside? No warnings that said that we ran out of Wi-Fi yeah. or anything? All right, awesome. Checking for eggs. Thanks, Fi. Got it. All right. Okay, so we're, uh, we're gonna go get started with the rhubarb in our kitchen. Um, we're gonna make today rhubarb pie. We're gonna make rhubarb compote, which is something my dad made when I was a kid. I really loved a lot. Um, and then we're also gonna make rhubarb uh, agua fresca, which is a recipe we make at Clover, uh, which I think you'll all enjoy. And we're gonna make the, the agua fresca is a really flexible recipe, so I'm going to show you an approach to that, and then you can adapt it for other kinds of fruits and berries. There's a question. It's already a question. Awesome. How do you split the 
plant to give away? Oh, um, sort of rough. I mean, we're just going to chop in there with a, with a shovel and split some of it away. But it's a pretty hardy plant, and it'll survive that just fine. Um, all right. So first thing, first thing we're going to do is rinse the rhubarb. And we're going to get the pie going. Blue, do you want to turn the oven on for the pie? Oh. Uh, let's turn it on to um, 425, OK? So we're washing this uh, for a couple things. One is we want to get rid of um, obvious like sand and dirt, stones, anything like that. Um, it's got like a translucent color. It's really, really pretty. And then the other thing is we just want to get rid of anything invisible. Uh, it might be on it too because um, it's been sitting out there in the out outdoors. And, um, we want to make sure it's really clean before we uh, cook with it. So, um, so that's our clean rhubarb. And, um, and we'll use this to make pie. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll make the filling for the pie first, and then we'll go from there to make the pie crust itself. Uh, this pie crust that we're going to make today, this is a recipe that my um, from my mom, and um, I think she learned from her mother. Uh, I don't know how long people in my family have been making pie crust this way, but. Um, it was the way I learned to make pie crust, and I didn't know any different way t until I got a little older. And um, we're using room temperature butter, and that's an odd thing. Most people talk about using cold butter. And we also are going to make the crust directly. We're not going to refrigerate it. So both of those things are a little bit strange. Uh, but there are other recipes I've found that do similar kinds of things. So it's just a, a different style of an approach, but what you end up with is an incredibly flaky crust. Um, it's absolutely divine. Pies are one of my favorite things, and I, I haven't had pie crust I like better than this, and a lot of the pies have a really delicious crust. So, hey Vi, when you come back, you can help with um, cutting up some rhubarb, okay? okay. Alright, so what we're going to do first is we're going to cut some up for the, for the pie. And when I was a kid, I used to watch my grandma take the rhubarb and She'd peel it. She'd like take a little paring knife and she'd peel down the rhubarb uh, to get rid of the uh, uh, sort of tough outside and some of those strands. Um, I have modified that. Um, I don't think it's really necessary. And so what I would do though is when I'm cutting it, I'd make sure that the cuts. What, what happens? This is the same with celery. You can see that there's these like strands, you know, and those are what can become, if you have a long strand you bite into, it can become a little bit unpleasant in your mouth. Now, if you, with, this is the same with celery and anything else like this, it's very fibrous. If you make sure the cuts that you are making are pretty short, then the longest fiber we're going to find in this rhubarb is going to be about that size, and that's not very offensive when you eat it. Um, it's going to cook down nicely too. But if I left longer pieces like this, that longer fiber would actually feel more uh, frustrating to bite into. So this this pie is going to be absolutely delicious and tender and really yummy without us peeling any of that. The other advantage we have to leaving the skin there is that the rhubarb is going to have a lot more of its nutrients for us. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about how do we maximize the nutrients we get from the food we have. You know, we're in this funny COVID period where we're at home and, um, and I'm becoming even more aware than ever of like how limited you know, the food we have, even in our own house, but also what we have access to is. And so we're trying, I'm thinking a lot about how do you make sure you're getting the maximum nutrients out of what you're eating. You got, you got a question just came in, huh, Vi? Yeah. Shoot. Do you use regular thick or thin thick rhubarb? Thick. 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 Great question. Convection or regular setting on the oven. Uh, Sometimes I've tried to say what I'm using. Uh, most everything that we've done could be done either way. But I generally use convection. Uh, what convection is, for those of you who don't know, um, it just turns on a fan in the oven. And so that blows the air around. So without convection, um, you have more heat gradients. So maybe the air that's closest to the food you're cooking might be colder 
than the air that's closer to the burners. And there's still going to be some natural convection in there, but it might not happen very rapidly. When you turn on that fan, it blows all the air around, and it has more, you know, less gradients in temperature. So more of the temperature is similar in throughout the oven, and that allows for faster cooking. It also allows for um, you can get to crispier um, products. So some of those advantages, you might get fluffier results if you're if you're baking um, baked goods that are yeasted or something like that. Uh, so those are some of the advantages of convection. But there are some ovens that can't do convection. And all these things can be done in both. Convection will typically be a little faster. So if you see some cook time for me, it might be different for you. And the thing is, different convection ovens cook at different speeds too. So a lot of cooking times are really hard to make rigid. And uh, they really vary a lot based on what you're working with. Uh, so I try as much as I can in the show to talk about what it looks like when it's done and give you a range of times to expect. Um, cool. Uh, let us know if you have more questions. We'll keep trying to answer. Violet's on them today. Um, so this is going to be plenty of rhubarb filling for the pie. And a lot of times when we're making pies, we'll make more than one. I think today we'll just make a single pie, but um, it's not that much different to make two or three or four pies versus making one. And so usually when we make pies, we'll make a couple, and we'll try to give one to a neighbor or a friend. Uh, sometimes I'll bring some into Clover and share pies there. Um, I think pies are a really nice thing to share with other people. Um, and I love pies. All right, so we've got our rhubarb here. Now we're going to need sugar. Is that, that's probably a little high for you, right, Sean? Yeah. All right, so we're going to need sugar. This is going to take, this the style of pie we're making right now uh, would work for um, other kinds of um, pies, so you could make, I mean this would look very similar if we were making an apple pie, a blueberry pie, and a, a peach pie, and I'm hoping we're going to make all those things on the show. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of pepper, and um, I'm not doing a lot, this is like, this is just ground pepper. Um, I'm not doing a lot, but I'm going to do a little bit of it. The idea here is I don't want to taste ground pepper in the final pie. So if I'm putting so much in that like tastes like pepper, I've done too much. Um, same idea with the salt. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in here. It's probably an eighth of a teaspoon, but I don't want so much salt that it tastes salty. Um, the, both these things are gonna add more depth to the flavor in the end. Now, I'm gonna take some sugar, and with rhubarb, I'm gonna put quite a bit more sugar than I normally would um, for pie, and that's because it's pretty tart. So that's about a half a cup of sugar for this pie. Uh, we're probably, I don't know, maybe it's really going to be like, I should probably measure how many cups of rhubarb we have. I'm guessing we have about four cups of rhubarb here. And let me just see what that looks like so I can write this recipe up for everybody. Okay, so it's more than four cups. It's like six cups. It's more than six cups. <laughs> how many cups do you think we have, Violet? Um... All right, <laughs> so <laughs> we probably have, this is like, uh, that's like seven, eight cups, seven or eight cups, and we'll, we'll see uh, what this ends up being in the pie, but I'd say we have like seven or eight cups of rhubarb, just to give you a sense. That, what I just did, had nothing to do with making the pie, that had everything to do with me being able to write a recipe up that you guys can follow later. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to need to add to this... Um, uh, we could add a little bit of vanilla extract. Do you want to grab that, Blue? Uh, and we're going to have to add a little bit of flour. Vanilla extract's right behind that chai. Alright. And for the, um, I'm using a measuring cup this time for the flour. That's a quarter of a cup of flour. So the flour is something you'll see um, is a really common technique when you're making pies with fruit or berries in, and um, we, what we do is just add it like that right on top of the fruit or berries. And this rhubarb is already a little wet. You saw me just wash it and we cut it so it's a little bit wet. And then we just toss it with our hands a little bit. I'm adding, let's say that's a half a teaspoon of um, vanilla extract. And so I'm, it's got the sugar. And it's got the flour, and all of that's a little bit wet. Um, you can see it on my hands, a little bit wet just from the natural water on the rhubarb. And this is the filling. And this same process is going to be used for lots of different pies we're going to make. Um, 
That's really yummy. I just licked my finger to pull off. Alright. That's really yummy. Okay. Now, that's the filling for the pie. Now we're going to make the crust for the pie. I'm going to just take a second to talk a little bit about pie um, pans. And then, um, Violet, do you want to um, help help put together the pie crust and roll it out? It would be yeah. awesome. Um, so, I'll show you, I'll give you some strong opinions on pie pans. These Pyrex, this is like a nine inch pan. I like these a lot. You see, I've got three of them. I like them a lot. It's a great size. Uh, this is the same thing. It's aluminum, and I got this from a, um, a pie um, place in, uh, where was it, Wisconsin? <laughs> On a trip across country once. And they just, it was the way they sold whole pies. They gave you the tin. It's obviously been used a lot. I think if you lived around there, there was a deposit on it. We couldn't return it, but you'd return it if you lived around there and they'd bake you another pie. It was really, really good pie. Do you remember that? Yeah, I made like a peach pie. So good. It was one of the better pies I've ever had, not at home. Um, these are great. The size pan is great. It can be aluminum, it can be glass. They work really, really well. Um, this one's also great. This is also nine inches. This is a, this is a, um, this is not Pyrex, it says something else, Anchor Hawking, but same idea. It's a, it's a tempered glass pan. And this is also nine inches, maybe it's nine and a half. Yeah, it looks like it, it's about nine inches. It has little handles. I like that too. All of these are great. Now I'm gonna show you what to avoid. Uh, this is a nightmare. Don't get these. And if you've got them, try to give them away. I've tried to give these away and they keep coming back. It's like. I try whenever we give pies away, I'm hoping someone will just hold on to it because um, I, I hate these pans, um, but I don't want to just throw it away. But this is a larger pan, and the, this is a nine. In, this says it's nine and a half inch. It just feels huge. It's got like extra depth. It's like extra big. Problem with this is the pies don't cook very well, or you have to change everything to try to get them to come out right. I really don't like them. Um, so I would avoid any pie pan that says like extra deep, you know, extra size. I think that there's a lot of people have ended up with those larger pans. It's actually sort of harder to buy the small ones now. And I think it has to do with, um, you know, just in general, people think bigger is better, bigger, bigger, bigger. And so a bigger pie pan, a deeper pie pan must be better. It's really not. Um, so yeah, I don't, I can't guarantee you're going to get great results with this recipe if you use one of these giant extra deep pans. Uh, but if you use a nine inch pan, I'm really confident it's going to come out really well. So that's my little um, speech about uh, pie pans. Um, we want to put these away uh, underneath the, the cake tins over there. Are you going to use this one? Yeah, we'll use this one today. Now, um, you want to grab the pastry um, mat, oh, story in the way. Go. Just go ahead and slide those in. Perfect. Thanks, Okay. So, next thing you need for making pie by this method, I, I put together a little guide on the website because um, I thought, you know, hoping people can follow along home. Uh, uh, for, oddly enough, this pie we're making today, it's going to require more specialized equipment than anything else we've done on the show to date. And um, uh, the, none of this equipment's very expensive, but if I'm at your house and you want a pie, uh, I will not make this style of crust if you don't have this equipment. It's just, um, it'll be setting everybody up for frustration, and I'll try to make a different style, which isn't as good. But this is my favorite kind of pie crust, but you need to have a pastry mat and you need to have, um, uh, this usually comes with a mat. Um, it's like a little sock. And I keep these in a little Ziploc bag I keep in my freezer because they get butter on them and they get flour on them and those things will get rancid if you leave them out of room temperature. So you want to keep it all in the freezer. It's a little trick from my grandma. Uh, we're going to put some flour on this mat and we're going to put a little flour on this rolling pin. So this is how we're, how we're going to get prepared for this. Um, and this, basically, the, the flour plus the fabric works to keep everything from being sticky. And uh, it's just super important for pulling this off. I, it, I can't stress it enough. You, it's, there's a lot of things you can substitute. I'm the first to give you creative ideas for substitutions, but if you want to follow along on this particular recipe for pie crust, make sure you have these things. 
Um, next thing that we need is we need a bowl. And then Violet, will you grab the measuring spoons and the pastry cutter? Sure. And I should just write this up on it. Yeah, that's the pastry cutter. You got it. Yep. And then the measuring spoons and also the measuring cups. And that big measuring spoon one too. The, the like weird, weird measuring spoon. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Got it? All right, I'm going to write it on this side uh, because I have a crumpets recipe there I've been playing around with, which is really fun, and I haven't finished it yet. Um, okay. So, um, so this this uh, this pie recipe. I'm sorry. I'm just. Um, uh, wait. So we'll follow up with the other ingredients later. But just the pie crust. Uh, we're going to want to do two cups of um, all-purpose flour. We actually needed bread flour today. It's okay, it's not ideal, but we don't have any all-purpose. Um, and I'll work fine. And if you want to mix in some fresh wheat or something else, you can as well. Um, if you go 100% fresh wheat, you can make this work, but it's a lot harder. Um, I was playing with one I made the other day. I made one the other day where I put in some um, the starter, using up some old starter, and the pie was really good. Did you think so, Blue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was delicious. So that's something else you can do. I wouldn't put a large percentage of the total in. Like maybe if you're doing two cups of flour, maybe a quarter of that or less is the starter, but it does work. Um, and then you can do one and three quarters um, st stick of butter. So, and that's going to be room temperature. All right, RT, room temperature. And then we've got half a teaspoon of salt and uh, six to eight tablespoons of cold water. Now, um, the uh, uh, this recipe is for a pie that you have a bottom and a top crust. The recipe is a little different if you're just doing a bottom or if you're doing a lattice, but this is the right amount for a bottom and a top crust. So um, the rhubarb pie, we're going to cook it up similar to like, a, um, like an apple pie. So it's a fully enclosed pie. All right, Violet, you want to um, measure these out? Sure. So we need the two cups of flour to start with, and I'm going to give you a uh, I'm going to let you sift that. Okay? Flour? Yep. Okay. We're going to sift it just to get rid of any clumps and to um, uh, aerate the flour a little bit. That's good. That's good. Now that's one. Perfect. And we need a second one. And should we do a little bit of uh, fresh wheat? Maybe make that one a little less full, Violet, and I'll fill up the remainder of it with some fresh wheat, okay? okay. So, sorry about the noise, we're just grinding a little bit of wheat. You can do this with all white flour. Um. Okay, so you could do this 100% white if you wanted to. Uh, we're just adding probably about a quarter of this as fresh, fresh wheat. Um, so three quarters white, one quarter fresh. Um, it, it, I've made this a, a bunch of times with 100% fresh wheat, 
Uh, it gives you a little, it's a little bit trickier. Just, it's a little trickier to handle. Um, but it does, it does work. All right, so what we're left with here is just the bran. And you can see there's quite a lot. That's just the bran left over from the um, fresh wheat. And all that bran, that's like the fiber on the outside of the, of the wheat seed, the wheat berry seed. Oh, and sometimes in stores they'll just sell wheat bran. Um, but this is what it is. And none of that makes it into flour normally. Even whole wheat flour uh, typically doesn't have that uh, outer, outer wheat bran in it. So this is uh, not going to go into the pie. Um, and so here we, do, here we have our flour. And now we're going to cut our butter into this. So Violet, you want to do that part? Sure. All right, so we need one and three quarters cups. I'm sorry, one and three quarters sticks. So each one has these markers on it. You wanna see? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we wanna have, we wanna have three quarters of that. So do you know where halfway would be? Yeah, that'd be the fourth one. Perfect, all right. And do you know where one quarter would be? Um, that would be Quarter. Yeah, the second one there. Yeah, second one. So then, if we have one quarter, two quarters is half, and then three quarters is going to be right there. Okay. So we want six of them in. And um, the way this recipe works is we'll actually use that it's a little melt of butter later. So we'll just set it aside. And, uh, and this part is going to go in here. All right. And you want to put yours in too, Vi? Whole thing? Yeah, whole thing. That's a lot of butter. Yes. Pie has a lot of butter. Um, if you want to make this vegan, you can use um, uh, you can use vegan shortening. Works great. Um, so that could be like Crisco or something like that. It's actually how it was sort of a default for a lot of people for a while. It could be margarine, or you could use like Earth Balance or some butter like that. They'll work great. And um, and this is the only aspect of this whole recipe that's not vegan. So it's a really easy one to adapt. Do you want to um, cut this? Sure. All right. And so I'll just show people first what I mean by cutting, and then I'll have you work on it, okay? So I'm running this pastry cutter through the butter. And this pastry cutter is another tool that I really recommend you have. Um, you could get away with a cuisinart, or you could use a fork or something to do this, but I don't think the results are quite as good. And we're gonna try to touch it as little as possible with our hands. And we're gonna try to just use this tool to cut that butter into the flour. And, and what we do is we're gonna get going pretty quickly with it because we want to be very thorough here. I want that butter, uh, I think it looks, the, the flour should look a little bit like cornmeal when we're getting to where we want to be. So this isn't there yet. Do you want to try? Sure. Go for it. Now, I took many years trying to figure out how I make my mom's pie crust and I would ask her like to show me how, and she makes it really, really quickly. And she didn't, I, I couldn't quite figure out what she was doing. And this went on for a long time. And then I would try to make it myself, it would never come out right. One of the things I did is my mom doesn't put much sugar in her pies. And I figured there must be sugar in a normal pie crust, but my mom, mom must have been leaving it out. So I would put a couple of tablespoons of sugar in here. I've since learned that you can't get the pie crust to work right if you do that. So. Uh, you do not want to add sugar to the pie crust. Uh, we have in here flour and butter. We're going to add a little bit of salt and water. That's it. Nothing else goes in the pie crust. Uh, other things you add to the pie crust, um, I mean, you could substitute the butter, but other than that, you may uh, have a bad impact on what the final result is. Um, salt. All right, and this is going to be a half teaspoon of salt, so that little, there we go. But you're doing an awesome job. And you can see, I don't want to touch this too much with my hands, but you can see it's starting to look a little bit more like cornmeal, like it's starting to look coarse. Awesome. So, now, um, now that we have this all cut into there, we're going to add some water. And we don't need to add too much water, so 
It's looking really good, Violet. You did a great job. It's getting so dark and rainy outside. Um, so we're going to add six to eight tablespoons of water here. And I've got this funny tablespoon measure, but it's great for making pie because it's got one, two, three, four tablespoons all in one. You want to? So now one thing we're going to do with this, which is really important, is we're going to sprinkle it on. So there we go. So that's four tablespoons. You're just going to sprinkle it on. Nice job. Yep. Yep, sprinkle it all around. Perfect. So that's four. I'll go ahead and dump the rest now. That's good. There you go. Four. We'll do two more. And then we'll stop there. That's the lower limit. That's the six. And we will do more. We'll do eight if we need to. But go ahead and sprinkle it on. Why do you sprinkle it? Why do we sprinkle it? Because we want to get it all spread around. We don't want just a clump of water. All right. Now. I'm going to come under that with my fingers and very gently, I'm going to um, incorporate the water, but I'm doing this very, very gently. And this is an important part of getting this to work. So I'm just coming under that with my fingers and I'm very gently incorporating that water, but barely. And this is another thing I got wrong before I figured out how my mom was making the uh, pie crust, is I think I thought she wasn't doing that enough like mixing it enough, um, but it's really not, doesn't work if you mix it too much. So that's the right amount. I'm just gonna wash my hands off. The question there? Yeah. Shoot. Someone says, um, uh, someone asked if it was cold water or hot water. Uh, it's cold water. Uh, it's cold, well, it's, it's like as it comes out of the tap. So it's not like icy cold, but it's just, but it's not hot water. All right, this does not look like it's very well mixed, but this is where we want to stop. So I just like put my hand through that a couple times and we're going to dump that out. And this is not going to look like dough to you guys, but trust me, it will work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this together. Okay. And we're going to make a top and a bottom. And so we could do one of two things. We could cut it right now, or we could roll this out with excess, cut the excess and then roll it again. We're going to do the second approach. So what we're going to do is, so I just brought this together with my hands. So you can see it's a very loose pile. And, um, and now I'm going to take the rolling pin and I'm going to press it down into this pile and it falls apart. That's totally fine. And I'm going to do it again, and again, and again. So I, I do like a cross and then I do the angles on the cross. And now I'm going to come to the middle and I'm gonna roll it gently from the middle, one direction. I'm gonna to come to the other middle, and then again, I'm gonna come this way, again, I'm going to come this way, again. And um, in this case, it's like, it didn't quite come together enough in that middle for me, that's all right. I'm just gonna bring this all together. Now, if it did come together there, I wouldn't be doing this, but it hadn't quite come together in that one spot, which is fine. So I bring it all together, make sure I've got enough flour on my rolling pin. Again, 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 again. Roll forward, roll back. Roll forward, roll back. Roll it at the angle, roll at the angle. Now, when people are rolling, it a lot of times, even people that are doing it perfectly, it looks like they're going back and forth, back and forth. And what what is usually what the best thing to do is not that. The best thing to do is to start in the middle and roll away from the middle. Lift it, bring it back to the middle, roll away from the middle. Okay. But if I'm doing that very quickly, it might look, you know, you can see in time, it might look like I'm just rolling it back and forth, but I'm not um, putting pressure on it at all. And the pressure I do put is gentle, but I'm only trying to actively roll it when I'm moving away from the center, not when I'm um, not back and forth. And that's a, that keeps the dough from getting too tough. Now, we want to size this to the pie here. And, um, and so what I want is I want to lift this up and put it in the pie pan and I want it to come a little bit over like two fingers over the um, pan. So I'm going to cut uh, the dough to give me the right amount and you can do that with um, just like a butter knife um, will work fine. I'm just going to grab one. All right. 
So we're gonna put this here and we're just gonna cut it like a little ways outside. And I can always adjust this later. So if I get it a little bit off, I can make some adjustments to it later. This remaining dough, there's quite a lot there and that's good because that's gonna become the top for the pie. And this is gonna be the bottom for the pie. So now that we have it like that, I'm just gonna give it a couple more rolls just to make sure it's an even thickness everywhere. And then we're going to bring this, and at this point the dough is pretty fragile. We're gonna roll it up. Um, is it sticking a little bit right there? Yeah. Well, so it is sticking a little bit right there. It must be a place I didn't have quite enough of the um, flour underneath it. There it is. Okay, we survived it. Um, so we're rolling this up on the rolling pin and it's all pretty fragile right now. And if it falls apart, don't worry about it. You just make it into a ball again and roll it out again. It's totally fine. Um, and uh, with practice, you'll get to a place where you can usually get it to work the first time. But the whole thing is pretty fragile. And you can see there are some little holes here, but that's all right. I'll show you how we're gonna deal with those in a second. Um, but the, this is deliberately fragile because it's, the fragileness of this dough is gonna be related to how um, flaky and tender it is when we eat it. So we don't want it to be like a really tough dough. There are other methods and recipes that can make um, a much more robust dough that's easier to move around. And this one's not like that. This is a little more fragile, but the result is something that's just like heavenly. All right, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just taking little pinches and I'm just sealing up those little holes. Mostly I'm concerned about holes where all the juices would spill through because I would like the um, juice of the rhubarb to stay in the crust and not go underneath it. And so that is all set. Um, and now we are ready to roll the bottom. Do you want to do this one, Vi? Sure. You're on it. Oh, let's put a little more flour because remember it was sticking last time? Nope. Okay. I'll put a little bit on your rolling pin too. Okay. So do you remember how to do it? Awesome. So just cross it first. Yeah, there, that's good. Cross it there, bingo. Yep, and cross it here. And then cross it there. All right, now come back and roll it forward. Good job. Then bring it to the center and roll it back toward you. Okay, and then turn around here. Do, 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 do. See if you can do, can you do it there? Yeah. You're too hard to reach in it. <laughs> and then pull it towards you. Maybe we should put it more in the corner. And then try and get it in the center and push it that way. Push it this way. So you're doing like cross, and then you're doing angled cross. And you're starting, you're rolling each, each angle away from the center. Awesome. Let's put it right here now. Okay, here, and then come over here, there you go, here, back towards you, there you go. And when I'm rolling it, or helping by the roll, you can see sometimes I'm just putting my hands on top of the pin and just rolling it like that. Okay, now, this is getting a little more round, right? Do you think so? Yeah. There. All right, so I think the main one needs right now is something in that direction. So we're going to just pick angles that let us get this more or less round. It doesn't have to be perfectly, perfectly round. We want it to be round-ish. And you can see it broke a little bit in the middle part. That's okay. I might even just put a little piece of dough on there. Um, okay. And the whole thing's fragile, just like the other one was. It's probably a little less fragile because it's been rolled twice now. And we're gonna go ahead and roll that up a little bit. And now, bring our pie shell over, and we're gonna take the rhubarb filling, fill this pie up. Okay, that's a good amount. So, seven to eight cups of rhubarb, bingo. That was perfect. So. You can see, I'm like, I have this problem sometimes. I don't really cook from recipes, but I know what it looks like, but I don't always know how many cups it is until I measure it for you guys. 
Um, some of these shows I've done that beforehand. This one I didn't, so. All right, that looks really yummy. You want to taste it? It's really good. It's like really good, isn't it? All right. Now, pies are a good thing for our COVID period because uh, once they come out of the oven, they've, they've been totally baked and sanitized, um, assuming you baked it long enough. So if you don't touch it a lot, well, it cools. It's a nice thing to share with other people. Um, and we're gonna roll this back. And what we're gonna do now is use that same trick to bring the top of this crust over and bring this back into the middle. And now what we're gonna do is come around. I think we made that a little lot bigger than we even needed to, huh, Violet? Yeah. We come around and cut it. And again, it's sort of that same, the way I always think about it is like two fingers, but I have pretty big fingers. So for some of you, it might be less than two fingers. And that's the distance I wanna cut that um, crust out. Now we'll usually use that extra crust for some fun things. My dad used to always make, um, he would take a little ramkin and roll those out and then fill it. Sometimes you do savory things, but a lot of times you'd fill it with sweet things. Um, I was just making pie over the weekend with the kids. We made an apple pie and we made um, hand pies afterwards with some savory ingredients. It was really good, right? We had some, uh, we had a curry, a chickpea coconut curry in the, in the fridge and we put that in as a filling. It was really, really good. And we had a black bean one. All right, so we've gone ahead and we've cut that. Now this is the part I'm least good at. Um, I'm not like great at making everything pretty, but you want to tuck that under and you want to come around and crimp the crust. And so I usually have Brooke do this part for me because she does a much better job, but she's right now off camera. <laughs> so she's probably looking at me and laughing a little bit. Um, I have a, I have a really nice video of um, doing this with my grandmother um, who passed away uh, just last year, but she was 101 years old. Yeah. And I was doing this with her when she was 100 years old. She was still uh, crimping pie dough and doing it better than I could. <laughs> so this, is a, this is a little bit of a, a finesse thing. I'm not great at this. But the nice thing about the pie is however you crimp this, however pretty or ugly it looks, the pie might taste really, really, really good because the taste of the pie doesn't have a lot to do with the crimping. Okay, so you see I've crimped around. I have a few broken spots. I'm not at all worried about that. It's fine. I've got, um, I forgot to add butter on top. Normally my grandma and my mom would add butter on top of that filling before putting the crust on. I just blinked on it, but that's what this could be used for. It just little clops of butter. It's okay that we didn't do that. Um, I'm now gonna poke holes in the top because as steam comes out, I don't want it to get caught in there. And I'll do that with a fork. And um, I, you can just make a random pattern if you wanted. We'll call it stars. But um, we usually do a heart shaped pattern in our house. So I'm gonna, I'm making three hearts and this might not be super obvious right now and it might be more clear when the pie cooks. But there's a little, there's three hearts touching in the middle there. So it looks like a clover. Um, and now you can brush the top of this with uh, egg or cream if you want to. Um, I really like just a, a one whole egg beat up really well, if you're going to do that. Um, today we're not going to do that, we're just going to leave it the way it is, but if you like that, there's not really anything functional about those, that, but in this case, but if you like that sheen, you could, you could brush this with something. So we're going to take this pie and we're going to put this in at, um, at 425 to start with, and then after a little bit we're going to bring that temperature down, and I'll just show you what I was meaning. You can see all the, the excess here, um, and that might mean I have the pie crust a little bit thinner than I could have in some of the areas, but um, we almost always have some excess. 
And the fun thing about that is we can use this. And so um, what we'll do is probably make some little, uh, little treats for later. I don't know, maybe we'll make something savory. We can figure out what we want to do with that. But, but you can always do something fun with the extras. Um, Brooke's grandma had something that she did where she would um, cut these little strips and then twirl them up and put cinnamon and sugar on them and, and bake those. And they're like these little cinnamon twirl sticks, which I really like. Um, but you can do a lot of things with this extra dough. I wouldn't throw it out. I'd use it to make something fun. All right, so pie's baking. Um, right now it's, what time is it? Um, it's 5 o'clock. Whoa, we were way slower than I realized. Okay, well we're gonna, pie's baking, we're gonna make a couple more things, um, and uh, uh, we'll come back to the pie in a little bit. Probably gonna leave for like five, 10 minutes at that high temperature and then bring the temperature down. So let's transition right now and make um, some rhubarb compote. So this is something we do at Clover on oatmeal. Um, when I was a kid, I had it on um, waffles, on pancakes, things like that, and I love it. Um, Violet, do you want to cut up some rhubarb? Sure. All right, so let's do this. Um, why don't you cut up um, the rhubarb right here? You can use my big knife. Do you want to use your smaller knife? Um, I, uh, either one's good. I just. Um... I think yours is down on the very bottom. Yeah. Finger guard. Finger guard? Yeah. Where is that? I thought I saw it the other day. There it is. Do you want to try and use a big one or you want a smaller knife? Um, I, I, so with the rhubarb, we cut it in half and then bring it together like that. And then you're going to do that like that, okay? Okay. And you're going to want this on the other hand. You got it. Beep, beep, beep. There you go. Okay. And you got this down here. Now hold, the, hold that there. Okay. Go ahead. Just until it goes all the way through and sort of snaps at the end. You gotta keep pushing, there you go, see? Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, there you go. All right, so keep keep doing that. So, Violet's cutting up the rhubarb. This is very similar to the way we were cutting it for the pie. Um, again, we don't want the individual fibers to be too long, so we wanna keep those sort of short. You got it? Oop. And then when you're doing it, I just slide that knife a little bit and rock it a little bit. It makes it easier to get down. Keep that thumb in. Thumb in. There you go. What's that? Pinky. Pinky. Blue's watching out for you too. Bye. All right. Good job. Let's see. Nice. Okay. Perfect. One more. All right. So this is how we're going to cut up the rhubarb. Very similar to what we were doing before. And now we're going to put this um, in a pan. This is what we're going to cook it in. And we're going to toss it with sugar. And we're not making a large amount of compote today. Like if we were having uh, pancakes, we might make a lot more than this. And you want to put enough sugar on it that when you toss it around, it coats all the rhubarb. So that's, that's the amount of sugar that we do is like what coats the rhubarb nicely. You don't want a lot of extra sugar in there. Um, but you don't, you don't want a point where there's not enough to coat everything. So that's great, and that's, that's what we do there. And then um, we're just gonna go ahead and cook this up here. You know what, since we're running a little short on the show, I think I might skip the agua fresca today. Maybe we'll do that another day. And I'm gonna just um, add all the rest of this rhubarb into the compote here. So I hope I'm not disappointing anybody by skipping the agua fresca. We're just running a little longer than I realized. I'm, real, I'm thinking now about it, and we took a little detour and said hi to the chicks at the beginning, didn't we? Uh, we took a little bit of time outside. So I'm just going through the rest of this rhubarb. And I've knocked all my little peppers over. Um, so it's the same thing. I just added more rhubarb. You can see there's not sugar on all of that. And it's not a lot of sugar I want to add here, but I want to add enough that when I toss that rhubarb in the sugar, the sugar coats the rhubarb. It's not that different from what we were doing in the pie. And then I'm just taking this and I'm going to put it on heat. And um, we'll 
roll clean my hands quickly. And I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a wooden spoon. If anybody has any other questions, please send them our way. All right, so I'm just turning some light on so I can see this. Now, um, we're just turning this on high, and what's gonna happen is in a couple minutes, it's gonna start cooking the rhubarb and the juices will come out. And um, we're gonna, it's gonna cook for about five or eight minutes and it's gonna be done. Um, this is a very simple recipe, not much to it. Um, so you can hear it starting to sizzle a little bit. The temperature is just coming up a little bit there. Um, and you can see there's a little bit of melting going on. Uh, see that, or, or a little bit of water coming out of the rhubarb for this happening, which is great. So the rhubarb has a lot of water in it. As the heat comes on, it starts dropping. So it's at 504. I know we're running over. I'm sorry. I just didn't time it that well this episode. Um, we took a little too much time with the chickens and everything outside. But this is really fun. Also, the pie crust is a really special thing. Um, and I wanted to make sure I went through all the details. Taking enough time so you guys could make it yourselves at home. Um, the results can be really, really beautiful. So we're just, we don't have to stand here. I mean, this is something I would normally be. I'd make some other things at the same time. Um, we'd usually do this when we have a griddle out and we're making pancakes. Uh, but you can see that the water is all starting to come out of the rhubarb. And what you do is just like periodically, you just stir it a little bit. So you can see it's starting to create some wetness on its own, which is really great. And I'm just going to let that keep going. The temperature's on high there. I'm going to come back to the um, oven and I'm going to turn it down to 350 now. So I'm bringing that temperature of the oven down. Uh, looks really good. And um, I'm not sure, on some pies you start them a little bit high. I think it, I'm not exactly sure why, but I know it works better. I've tried doing it otherwise, it doesn't work as well. Um, and, uh, but you, if you keep it on the very high temperature the whole way, you may burn the crust before you cook the interior. Sh a question? Um, well, someone asked if you could do the um, all the fresco some, like, like Yes, that. another time. So there is somebody I disappointed by skipping it. I'm sorry about that. We'll, we'll, we'll add the agua fresco recipe a different time. Um, I think just in the interest of time, I'll, I'll cut it short today. But what we'll do is we'll record a little supplemental. Um, show that we can share and people can see how to do the agua fresca. So this is cooking up really nicely right now. Um, you can see there's like a juice forming. It's got like a little bit of a reddish color and rhubarb uh, gets more and more red as the season goes on. So you can see this is very young rhubarb and it's pretty green. Um, I think it's really delicious at every point in the season. I love how it tastes when it's like this, but it will get more and more red in color. And this rhubarb we're making today will have a little bit of that uh, pinkish hue. But if I make this rhubarb in a month from now, it'll be like um, much more pink, right? And if we make it in two months, it'll be like almost a dark red crimson color. And uh, that's just something that happens with a plant as it, as it uh, ages. Um, and so this is not too far from being done. It's still on high temperature and you can see it's still breaking down a little bit. We want it to get a little bit mushy before we're going to turn off the heat. And it's getting pretty close to that point. And it's very, very simple. You could add anything you want. You could add vanilla to this or salt or other flavorings if you want. But the one we're making today is just sugar and rhubarb. Um, there's no water added to this. There's nothing else we've added. Do you want to maybe make them more rhubarb in the hand pie? Well, maybe we can make them something savory. Don't you think that'd be fun? Yeah? I wonder what we have in the fridge. I bet we've got something really yummy for that. Do you want to take a peek? Well, while this is cooking, we could just show people how to make a little hand pie. Sure. You want to, you want to take a peek? All right, so this is going to be about two more minutes. I just want to show you what it gets to when it's done. Um, what do we have that'd be good filling? How about those black beans up top? Those would be really yummy. Oh, there you found them. I put them in the fridge back and sorry, bye. Um, Bye has a science experience. She's trying to sprout some, some seeds and she was looking for them earlier. And I said, I'm sure I saw them somewhere and she just found where. Um, so, uh, so 
you want like a biscuit cutter here, I don't have the right shape or size, but I have this, uh, this is actually making a cake, it's like a spring mold, but it's a nice size um, for making a little hand pie. And you just go ahead and cut, cut the dough into a circle, and then you take your filling, and so in this case we just have some some black beans, those are some beautiful cocoa beans, they're called, from, uh, from Charlie Bear, from Bear's Beans. And you know these big, very fat um, black beans. And I'm gonna put um, uh, I might put like a little bit of a little bit of spices on there. So this is this is actually left over if you're watching the enchilada episode. I toasted up um, cumin and pepper, and it was a little more than I needed, so I saved it. That's what I've got right here. And then you're gonna take this. And you're going to just come over, um, and I may have filled that a little bit too much. Um, you're going to come over, and then you're going to press it down with a fork to seal that edge. And there we go. So this is a, a little hand pie. And you could brush that with uh, egg uh, to give it that little like look and a little shine on it. But it's, a, it's going to be a beautiful little snack. The thing that's really nice about these is they're great for taking uh, to school and lunches. They're great for picnics. They just travel really well. And it's sort of an old-fashioned preservation method. Yeah, you can go ahead. Right there's your principal. It doesn't matter if you cut a little bit off on the side. Um, it's sort of an old-fashioned preservation method. Pies are, in general. These will last for a couple days and um, be really, really yummy. So, you want to make a couple more of them? Yeah. I'm going to check in on the rhubarb. Uh, okay, so the rhubarb is looking awesome to me right now. So you see what's happened? It's it's still uh, got some wetness, but it's breaking down. And you've got some distinct chunks of rhubarb, but you're also getting a little bit of background that's less distinct. And this is where I was aiming to get it. This looks really, really nice to me. And if you love the rhubarb compote clover, you'll recognize it if you make this at home and taste it. Um, I may add just a pinch of salt on there, just a teeny teeny bit, and I think the rhubarb really is friendly with vanilla, so I'm going to add just a little bit of vanilla extract there at the end. Uh, if I added that earlier, I would have cooked out a lot of that vanilla flavor, and this is, um, so this is a beautiful compote. You can put this in the refrigerator or you can eat it hot. I'm going to blow on it so I don't burn myself. Really, really yummy. I love this flavor. This is the first real rhubarb we've had yet this year. And I'm like really, really happy to have it. It's so yummy. Do you want to taste a little bit, sweetie? Sure. All right, blink in and just blink. And I'll help you with that guy. I think you overfilled it a little bit. Definitely. Here. Go ahead. Help yourself some rhubarb. Um, make sure it's hot, so don't burn yourself on it, okay? Now, this is the biggest problem with these little guys is you can easily overfill them. Violet, I'll just put a little more in here that is going to work. So I'm just taking some of that out. Then we're going to bring it back around. Okay, make one more of these. And we'll take a peek at the pie in the oven and, um, and we'll wrap it up. If anybody has any other questions, I see Violet's going over there to get ready to answer them. Um, a little bit of seasoning in there. Bring that over. That's really good sauce. You like it? It's really yummy, huh? I love rhubarb so much. So there's a there's a nice little hand pie, and um, we'll just this is sometimes we'll make really uh, sweet things here, but today we're making sort of a more savory one, um, and we'll just have those for a snack tomorrow probably. Let's take a little pick, quick peek at the pie. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll show you what I've seen here, and we'll also show an example of when it's all the way done. So there's little bubbles that are forming um, around the crust, which is really great. I can tell it's very flaky, which is awesome. I'm going to let it go till it gets more brown. You can see over here it's getting golden brown. Um, it's still happy. At this point, I'm basically going to judge this by the crust. So I'm going to cook it until the crust is at the right color that I know it's not burnt and it's not bitter. 
um, but I'm going to go as far as I can, and then I'm going to pull it out. And then what you hope at that point is that the filling is cooked to a nice state. So what you do is you get a sense of like how to cook the crust, and then you adjust the temperature of the oven, how much filling you put in, other factors to make sure that at that spot where the crust is just right, the inside's also really good. And that's, that's what you'll get used to with different kinds of pies. If you're making pies at home, which I hope you are, um, Violet's working away on these little hand pies, which look awesome. Um, and I'm sorry to, to the folks that were hoping for the rhubarb agua fresca. We'll have to follow up with another episode on that. Uh, I just think we were running a little bit low on time. Um, so we'll follow up with that, and we'll also send a picture of the uh, pie when it's all the way done so you can see exactly what that looks like. Thanks for joining us today. Um, if you haven't found it yet, we have a website now, and I'm using that to house all the recipes. The recipes are also on the YouTube channel, but I think it's a lot more awkward to find them. And they're in the cop, they're in the description section of each video. But uh, if you go to the website, you can search them and find all the recipes. So um, I hope everybody can make use of that. Um, we used rhubarb from my backyard today. Um, we used uh, um, butter, which is, um, uh, I think this is cabin butter, so from Vermont. Uh, and we used, um, we used some flour from Up and Gill, which we were just there earlier today, which was a lot of fun on our way um, back from our trip to Western Mass. Um, and uh, this is a really great thing to play around with this time of year if you have access to a rhubarb plant yourself or if you have a friend, a friend who has rhubarb. I think it's, um, it's a really special thing to taste and to share. And thank you all for joining us today. We'll be back on Thursday where we do an iced coffee episode. So if you're curious how to make iced coffee at home, tune in.